Hello and welcome back to the final episode of So You Got a Life Sci Degree. We're your hosts, Farida and Lisa, two Life Sci undergrad students trying to navigate our future careers. This is episode 24, the episode to end all episodes. We're going to be having a brief reflection on our experience running this podcast, followed by a second game of how well do you know your co-host? All right, Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm okay. I actually just went swimming um, for the first time in, I think, something like four or five years. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was nice. Um, <laughs> I wasn't... <laughs> so, okay, so I got contact lenses f- for the purposes of, like, sometimes when I go to go swimming and, and other things like that. But I, for some reason, I just forgot to put them on. Like, I just didn't <laughs> think, like, when I left the house that I was like, oh, I should put on my contacts. <laughs> so I got to the pool and I was all frazzled and I was putting all my stuff away because it was only a 45 minutes from time, so I wanted to get into the pool quickly. Right. And then I get, I get in there and I kind of sit on the edge of the pool because it's been a while since I've swam and I'm kind of nervous and mm-hmm. I'm just sort of sitting on the edge and then one of the, the lifeguards comes up to me and, and he's like, oh, well, you know, just so you know that we're limiting it to two people per lane. Uh-huh. Um, so if you don't mind just like moving to a different lane. Uh-huh. Um, and I said, oh, yeah, sure. I'm not wearing my glasses. Can you tell me which lane <laughs> I should go to? Because I can't see which ones have people in them. <laughs> and the woman next to him just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I literally angry. could not tell which lanes had people in them. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, how are you doing? <laughs> um, kind of briefly mirroring your activities, I went biking after a few years, uh, mostly because Montreal biking, city biking, really scares me. Oh, um, yeah. So I tried it with my friend, who's a little more experienced today, but in the middle of a heat wave, so maybe not oh that kind of an idea. Did you go down the hill? <laughs> um. <laughs> There was, like, tiny hills, but Mm. also then when we went back, we had to go up them, (laughs) so... Mm, That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing with I feel like I would rather go up on the way there and then go down on the way back. I feel the opposite, because I feel like the way back (laughs) is always feel shorter... I actually had this conversation with my high school science something teacher (laughs) who used to bike to work every day. And he used to say, oh, like, I'm so happy that it's all uphill on the way home. And Mm -hmm. I asked why. And he said, well, then I'm sweaty when I get home. And that's why. (laughs) (laughs) The logic is consistent. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This episode is sponsored by Resume Worded. Resume Worded is an AI-powered online career platform that gives you instant tailored feedback on your resume and LinkedIn profile. They offer three main tools, Score My Resume, which uses AI technology to instantly score your resume according to what recruiters are looking for, Targeted Resume, which analyzes job descriptions to identify important keywords and skills missing from your resume, and LinkedIn Review, which identifies gaps in your profile to increase your visibility. Each of these features provides specific feedback to help you get past automated resume filtering and land interviews. They both offer free tools and optional paid features. I've been using Resume Worded myself for the past few months and am finding it really improves my job applications. I'm consistently surprised by how many weaknesses it is able to identify and the helpfulness of the step-by-step feedback. I'm also subscribed to their email newsletter. I normally hate email newsletters, but this one genuinely provides succinct and helpful advice that I would have never thought of otherwise. To check them out, visit ResumeWorded.com. Okay, so we're going to start off with the reflection portion of this episode. So firstly, we're going to tell you why we're choosing to end the podcast. And then secondly, we're just going to briefly discuss our experiences running this project. So, Frida, why are we ending this podcast? Well, I think we both have quite a few reasons, but for me, um, I'm starting a job in more of the data science field, and that's very different from biology and the life sciences. Um, And I feel like because I'm so new to the field, I have a lot to learn, and that learning takes a lot of time. And so I feel like I need to redistribute my efforts. When you said that you're, it's a very different field, my brain was like, yeah, and that it's profitable. (laughs) No, I'm, it's, I'm kidding. No I'm comments. Kidding. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, and for me, I have a filled last year. Listeners might know that I'm going into my last year where I'm doing a senior thesis. Exciting. Little, little thesis. <laughs> and just other things going on, just living on my own, just trying to enjoy my last year of university um, now that I'm living around campus. And yeah, like for me, I find that podcast genuinely takes a lot of time. I think people maybe don't, we didn't even realize just yeah. how much time and effort <laughs> it really takes to even make 
just make it like not yeah. even make it like amazing over the top but just make it. it it's it's truly like a lot of effort and for me like quite a bit of creative brain space as well mm. um so yeah yeah and i think i've gotten to a point where um we both you know had a good time making it but i feel like i've gained what i hope to from this experience um mm -hmm. which we'll get into a little bit more but i feel like it's a natural stopping point all right so we'll transition to more of our reflection questions starting with for you lisa what career insight do you think you've gained from this podcasting experience? Mm, I don't know. To be brutally honest, most of the people we interviewed, I was like, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I don't want to do anything that's more policy-based. I know that I like kind of careers that apply more of the hard science principles. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like it's kind of sad for me. Like none of them really clicked for me. I'm still generally feeling very dubious about what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> but yeah, what about yourself? Um, I think for me, I realized there's actually a lot more out there than I originally thought, um, especially now that we're shutting down the podcast. There's still a huge guest list of people we could have mm -hmm. interviewed. And I feel like I'm yeah. just discovering more people. I'm so sad we never got to interview a conservationist. We never got to interview a vet. <laughs> yeah. <sad. laughs> yeah, but... Um anyone wants to run a season two <laughs> yeah. um but yeah i feel like also the overall message i've taken away i guess that's applicable to my career going forward is that it's very rare for any path to feel linear even if like in hindsight it actually very much looks that way and a lot of our guests have been like oh yeah i feel like i've taken a very unconventional route and like the majority of our guests have said that so it's not really unconventional mm -hmm. yeah um I guess going along the path, the main commonality that pretty much all the guests had was to like focus on kind of building skills um, and taking up all the cool opportunities that come their way. And that kind of leads to a very cool career. Yeah, I would agree with that. Frida, what skills do you think that you've gained from the experience of running this podcast? Um, I think I've gotten a lot of skills for just running some kind of project or organization, just like your the ones that you're supposed to learn from doing school, like time management and organization um, and managing, you know, professional relationships. But it really feels different for me having ownership of the project or starting it. I really feel way more responsible for it. And I think there's been times in school that I've been way busier, but I haven't felt that same sense of like ownership and therefore mm. haven't invested as much into those kind of skills. This is also the first project that I got to work on with Lisa and that's really changed how I do things because Lisa Aww. is amazing at using systems Aww. to kind of automate recurring Yeah, you stuff. hear that employers? I'm like so amazing <laughs> at using systems. And she is like a checklist queen. Like mm -hmm. that's definitely been applied to other things in my life. <laughs> And I think the last thing is just like knowing, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but knowing what it takes to manage some kind of media project, there is just so much work involved. And there's a lot of people who who kind of fantasize about having like YouTube channels or like doing kind of music what? things. What? No and one would like... ever do that. What? I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really cool, but it's just like, it takes so much work that I'm like, I definitely don't have that as a pipe dream anytime soon so yeah how about for you i mean i think you touched on most of it for me i think i got really good at making an itinerary for a meeting because i feel like i usually go like okay now we're gonna talk about this now we're gonna talk about that in our meetings and kind of going through it efficiently i think our meetings got really short and like kind of condensed towards the end which i think is a good thing and yeah like i guess i got to work on things like making graphics um actually learning how podcasts are distributed and published which i'm not a techie person so that was difficult but i understand like the basic basics of it now and just get, obviously getting better at interviewing which is genuinely hard to do mm -hmm. so uh yeah that's that, those are my thoughts oh and also i think that you obviously learned how to edit audio at least at a basic level so i think that that's nice to know yeah it'd be cool because every episode i'd be like oh my god i discovered this new effect lisa this movie so it was so much easier <laughs> yeah that's nice all right our next question is what are some fun or unexpected things that have come out of the podcast I just think it's so cool some of the people we got to talk to. Yeah. Um, like, listen, listen, listen. I'm a mother. I love all my guests equally, but some of my guests I love more equally. <laughs> so, like, when we got to interview that plant scientist at NASA, yeah. I was like, what? Because we had been trying for months to get someone from NASA right. or the CSA or just anyone who just does space biology research. I didn't even think we would ever get anyone from NASA, but we got, like, a lead project scientist from yeah. NASA. And she literally just replied to my LinkedIn message. <laughs> <laughs> like she did we didn't even have to go through like a representative or anything like no it was it was wild um, it was awesome also the fact that we got to talk to uh dr diane Sachs that was really yeah, cool um, 
leader of the green party yeah doc rock babe. yeah i was i was just gonna say like a literally podcast, babe. if like nothing else good has come out of this podcast <laughs> and the only good thing is that i gotta sit down and talk to doc rock for an hour about his adventures in sweden like that is a worthy spending of my time yeah and tell him um, about your bladder yeah. so that was great oh god please <laughs> oh my god I, I, i'm gonna say cut that but y'all she's not gonna cut that because she's in charge of the editing yeah um what about you Fred? um kind of a weird or unexpected thing that happened is that we had to write a public relations request for one of our guests that was pretty funny we just kind of sounded more official than we ever have in any other context I yeah feel like. i know it, it was this was for the episode with jacqueline about genetic counseling yeah i guess the topic is kind of sensitive maybe i mean yeah but the hospital that she worked at wanted us to write a document saying like any affiliations of the podcast and what it's going to be used for and what her role is and like all that so that yeah. was weird <laughs> it was it was funny because when i was writing i was like this is going to be like read by like some hr rep and i'm just like over here like la la la, la. <laughs> yeah um so yeah that was nice yeah all right any final thoughts lisa <laughs> i i literally put this question here just so i could talk about um, how much i love our theme music because it took us so, like okay it was mostly me who was like doing all the scouting for our theme music and i'd like send you ones that i thought yeah. were decent i spent hours and, and t- to be fair like this isn't really sit down on, at the computer for three hours straight kind of work this is kind of like i'm on the bus i'm in the bathroom <laughs> kind of work but yeah it just took like a long time like a week or possibly more and like several hours of me browsing through all these different websites because we wanted something that was free and also royalty free yeah which which was which is hard but i just i love our theme music every time i hear it i jam like da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah we've got lots of compliments on it too <laughs> also the fact that it's called no regrets is just so amazing <laughs> because it's, it fits so well with the name of our podcast like i could not ask for a better theme music yeah yeah, yeah um, I, also, I also had so much fun making the, the patreon postcards yeah they're really cute <laughs> Yeah, I just really, really liked making them because it was kind of a cool way to like flex my creative brain or artsy brain or whatever. Yeah, so they were so cute. Fun. Some of them were honestly a <laughs> yeah. little bit dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my, my favorite one is that one month I did um, Eugene the Eukaryote uh-huh. and then the next month I did Mitchell the Mitochondrion <laughs> and I made them related. Like I used oh. the same color scheme for the two and then in the Mitchell one it had, it had a line that said Mitchell is thinking about moving into Eugene's apartment complex oh. as a joke about how the mitochondria was like endosym and symbiosis into yeah, yeah. that's so, so cute. i know it was i'm really proud of that one anyways <laughs> what about you um honestly i'm just surprised by the amount of support that we got and how Aww. fun it was um i think when i was working in the residence like some of my friends that would listen would kind of stop me in the cafe and we'd chat about it Aww. or lots of people would just ask how it's going um and that was really fun and kind of unexpected yeah. i feel like that really ties into one of the questions we have in the who is more likely <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm really happy we did it it was very fun <laughs> all right cool that's it for the reflection now on to the game so we're calling this game how well do you know your co-host uh, we played it back in our half birthday extravaganza <laughs> uh, but to re-explain the game this episode is the 24th episode so we have 24 questions and they're all about who is more likely to do something and then we are going to go three two one and answer at the same time so the potential answers to the questions are lisa farida or both um and then potentially argue about our differing answers <laughs> Question one, who causes more podcast interruptions like the bathroom, water, city noises, etc.? Okay, the funny thing here is that I feel like if you take out city noises, it drastically changes the question. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Three, two, one, both? Both. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I think bathroom and water were both pretty equal. I think Uh I have the city noises and I think Lisa has the phone calls, so phone call you yeah, i she says that because i literally just had no, one phone no, no, call no, right no. Now. we've had multiple phone Wait, call real? interruptions yes are you serious <laughs> yeah who the hell calls me rogers mostly <laughs> <laughs> okay listen may 2021 is an exception you cannot count i that. disagree also grandma's oh walking God. into our rooms i guess is one for oh, you as well yeah. <laughs> yeah well that was that was before may 2021 <laughs> yeah <laughs> Question number two, who is more likely to fall off of a chair? (laughs) I feel like there are so many interpretations of this question. Um, 
but we can discuss after we answer. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> okay. All right. Agreement. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just feel like I'm more likely to do weird things on a chair that would result in me falling off. Oh <laughs> like, goodness. to be clear, I think that if we're both just sitting calmly, like in a movie theater or at a restaurant, I think we both have like a very low probability of falling off of the chair. <laughs> it's just if we're doing some kind of wacky thing on it, which probably me. Yeah, I guess it was just you doing more wacky things. So I tried to <laughs> pretend really I was weird. a sloth at the Brom. That was probably a little risky. <laughs> 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 yeah i try to pretend i'm a sloth on the regular so there's that oh. <laughs> yeah All quote right. pretend <laughs> we know frida we know question three if we had a kid who would be the cool parent and who would be the strict parent oh. <laughs> okay wait so for this one how are because there's right so we can do cool parent well i guess first, that kind of answers and then <laughs> strict parent after oh okay all right Three, two, one. Lisa. Lisa. And me. <laughs> yeah. Wow, the leg there. <laughs> Lisa like heard my answer. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Sorry, it's it's confusing because you say three, two, one, and then it, it's like when someone's talking and they're slightly out of sync with you. Your brain wants to warp your talking <laughs> to in sync with them. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, I have a younger sister, and I'm already probably stricter than my parents yeah. there, so <laughs> yeah sense. but here's the thing is i feel like this is more reflection on you than on me because i think that in most situations i would be the strict parent like i'm thinking about a close friend of mine if we were to have raised babies i would be the strict parent my girlfriend i would be the strict parent i think <laughs> most people i would be the strict parent unless it's you that's fair. <laughs> I, would, I would be the parent who's like, let's go fly kites in the park. And the kid's like, no. <laughs> let's Pretty much me and my sister, chain. to be honest. <laughs> Wait, so you're the one who wants to fly kites? Um, Usually you're... it's like ride bikes or just go outside, really. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Question number four. Who is more likely to stay in Canada? Three, two, one. Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> okay. It's, this yeah. one I, I wasn't, like, too sure about. It, it's more just, like, I feel like there are so few countries that I can actually live in because I would like it to be predominantly English-speaking, and I would like it to be a place that's fairly multicultural. There's actually not that many English-speaking countries, and then primarily multicultural, so that knocks out Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the multicultural so, thing, like, I feel so spoiled, but yeah, that is a big, big issue. Right. <laughs> I mean, you did also go to Montreal, though. So. This is true, but it's still yeah. way better than most parts of the world. That's, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I was in a Dundas today, uh, this area of Hamilton, and it was like a small town vibe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Person at the pool didn't didn't even ask me for my ticket. She just kind of waved me, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to this place in Quebec that was about an hour and a half away from Montreal, and we were literally the only people oh, of color. Oh my god, I know, yeah. <laughs> the entire trip. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Anyway, question five. Who is most likely to become rich? I feel like this is not even, like, a discussion. Three, two, one, both. Frida. <laughs> I I feel like it's both. <laughs> Listen, I'm a, I'm a poor poet. I, I think I, I, I live if you're words. doing cool science stuff, I'm sure you will do great on it. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So I'm sure it's both. <laughs> that is why I went to LifeSci for the money. <laughs> and the quick gains. <laughs> well, I'm sure your passion will uh, <laughs> drive oh, you boy. into those. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just eat my bucks. passion for the next like. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yummy passion. All right, Frida, question number six. Who is better at keeping secrets? Three, two, one, Bo. Oh wait, sorry. What? <laughs> no, no, no. I I had the answer. What happened is that I got confused about what the question was asking. I was like, who's better at keeping them or who's bad at keeping them? Um, but my answer is that I am better at keeping secrets. <laughs> what? Okay, well, okay. To be fair, I was kind of thinking about saying that. Yeah, but the funny thing with this question is that you don't actually know what secrets are being kept from you, so you don't know the answer to this question. Pretty <laughs> much. I, like, you have no idea the number of secrets I'm not telling you. I have so many. I have secrets about yourself that you don't even know. Yeah. Um, I just I just don't believe you can keep things in your stomach, to be honest. 
No, that's not. What do you mean? All the time, I hint at my girlfriend, "Hey, I got you this thing," and she's like, "What'd you get me?" And I said. <laughs> It's from Chinatown, and she goes, "What is it?" And I go, "You have to see on Friday." <laughs> All the time, I'm so good, except for that one time that I sent her a photo of something unrelated and accidentally had the two imposter plushies in the corner. That was soul crushing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, except that time, I yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, there was also <laughs> this is a little bit embarrassing for you, but that time that we hung <laughs> out in high school with some of my high school friends. Um, mm -hmm. and I just told you about one of them and then you met them and you're like, oh, I know so much about you. And I was like, kill me now, please bring <laughs> me in this hole. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine for reason. you. <laughs> uh, one of my friends also did that to my girlfriend the first time we hung out in a group. Oh my God. She said, oh, it's so nice to finally meet you. And I said, oh, I forgot that I'm in a 90s sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that part. Um, it's a good reminder. <laughs> All right, question seven. Who is more likely to forget if they already told a certain story on the podcast? Three, two, one. Lisa? Oh. All right, sure. <laughs> wow, she's really not passionate about this question. <laughs> I feel I like I just have so many stories that I can't... Because I have, like, so many, like, weird things that go on in my life. Like, okay, you know what happened today? Today, while I was busing back from the Dundas swimming pool... At one point, the bus was turning, and as it was turning, I saw in the corner of my eye two people on a horseback crossing the street, <laughs> like full on horseback. And my brain was just like, "Oh yeah, it's two people on horseback." And then I was like, "Wait a minute, what?" <laughs> and I had to do a double take. Yeah, I had a discussion with one of my friends, kind of related to the horses, about what the purpose of all the Montreal police people on the horses oh, around. Yeah. <laughs> it's like are. you know we invented a replacement for that yeah. right? it's a police car <laughs> but the most annoying thing is that they poop everywhere and oh don't God, pick yeah. it up I made that, you, that's funny because the way that you said that made it sound like the horses don't pick up pick it up <laughs> <laughs> the horse poop everywhere and they don't even clean up after themselves <laughs> so rude question number eight who is more likely to go to the olympics three two one neither <laughs> Rude! Wait, I know that, that is, wasn't even wait, one of the of options, all, but I feel not even a strongly about a neither in this case. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. I, okay, this is. Do you, I have so many. Wait, the whole purpose of this game is that you have to pick a person. If you can't just say we definitely said neither last game, but also like, are we gonna go with person with like a lot of physical issues or a person who's super out of shape? Rude. I think I can like see like like a parallel universe in which I get really into swimming and go to the Paralympics. I hundred percent see that. Oh, I guess like Paralympics. Also, yeah. actually, I don't think I would even qualify for the Paralympics. That's a sad thing. Aww. Yeah, in an alternate universe, anything is possible. <laughs> I say hurt. <laughs> Question nine. Whose friends slash family are more invested in this podcast? Frida. <laughs> yes, it I'm is not me. Even gonna <laughs> like when, early when you were talking, you were like, oh, it's just so nice, all the support I've gotten. And and to be fair, my friends have been really sweet about it too, and like acquaintances that I know. But but your friends and family are like, when is the next episode coming out? I will be there at 10 02 p.m. with my wine glass and headphones. <laughs> ridiculous they are very much big fans yeah of i'm pretty sure my dad stopped listening <laughs> <laughs> question number 10 who is more likely to get stuck on a swing three two one Frida. lisa what interesting <laughs> i don't know why like i feel like in general like these kinds of questions it's me but like for some reason <laughs> these the swinging... kinds of questions that's yeah, kind of... <laughs> you know the ones you know the ones um but like this something about like the swing just makes me think free i don't know why i feel like you've you've talked about swinging in the past yeah i am a big swing fan i think that was my go-to <laughs> park it's activity. because you're small enough to still fit in. well i'm not saying now i mean as a child that was a oh. big swing thing i guess if there are swings i'll still swing on them but <laughs> I know because I'm familiar with the swings, I know where my limits are and would not get stuck in a swing. Well, to be wait, 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 to be clear, I feel like the only way to get stuck on a swing is to put yourself in the baby one. Like how would you get yeah, stuck? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would not yeah. do that because <laughs> I've definitely tried that up until the age where that like I would have gotten stuck. <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah again the fact that you just said that sentence i say farida because i've never tried <laughs> but i feel like going forward i would just not the do listen it anymore. the question is not <laughs> <laughs> all right all right <laughs> okay all right question 11 who is more likely to break a world record 
three, two, one, Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. I don't know what it would be. I don't either, but I feel like you would just get obsessed with doing one thing and then break the record on it. Yeah. There have been times where I've been really obsessed with specific things. There's been many times. <laughs> I hope it's a good record. <laughs> <laughs> if it's something like world record for the number of pillowcases eaten in one night oh my goodness I'm just like, <laughs> man i'm gonna enjoy enjoy life now because uh it's not looking good in the future <laughs> question number 12 who is more likely to wear mismatched shoes by accident hmm. three two one for both interesting i only have one pair of running shoes there is literally no way <laughs> i mean i used to have one pair i just got more but also uh -huh. i do realize i'm very absent-minded in a lot of mm. situations so i yeah. guess that makes sense like i would not be able to do that because because of my health conditions i'm so conscious of my footwear i would immediately mm. notice what about before? like mismatched uh gloves or something that's not the question <laughs> okay if you i had... only have one pair of gloves so okay if you had multiple pairs of shoes, who would it be? I know that's not the actual question, but just hypothetically. I still think you, because I'm just, I feel like I'm very, I'm very aware of the clothes that I'm putting on. Like, even when I wear mismatched socks, I'm aware that I'm wearing this. It's like a conscious decision. I'm like, that one's blue. That one's great. That's going to be my day today. But I decide that. I mean, I th <laughs> the implication that I don't is a little insulting. I have to say. <laughs> Well, no, I'm saying, like, I, th I feel like for you, it would be that you didn't notice until you go out, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for me, like, I notice always when I'm putting them on, and I'm just like, eh. Yeah, fair so. enough. <laughs> Question 13. Who is more likely to forget the other person's birthday? Three, two, one, me. Both? Okay, so the reason I answer both yes. is that I feel like you are way, way, way more likely to forget that I have a birthday, <laughs> that I was born, that I exist on this planet, that like I'm someone you should pay attention to, oh um, that you should get me a gift, something like that. Like anything like that, I feel like you're more likely, but... But I am terrible with remembering the actual specific days of people's. Mm. So if you were asking me right now, like, wh what's the day of your birthday? I'd be like, sometime in October, I think. <laughs> November. Is it September? I don't know. It's sometime in the yeah. fall. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have it written on my calendar, so mm. that's how I remember. Yeah. Um, can you remember the day of my birthday? Yeah, July 8th. But Yeah, see? Okay. <laughs> but I only have right. a handful of birthdays memorized. And also, I know mm. someone else born on the exact same day. So that helps with okay. your birthday. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just like the piggyback. Yeah, yeah like, but I think that... <laughs> no, the other person's the piggyback. <laughs> but also, I think like... <laughs> The people whose birthdays I remembered was back in middle school, so I just have a random assortment of middle school <laughs> friends' birthdays memorized. Like that that section of your brain just never updated. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like long term storage. Don't touch. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's also a follow up question to this, which is who's most likely to forget their own birthday? Um, and I think it's me, and I have a story related to this where my birthday in second year, I think it was. I had an exam and a chem lab that day, like a six hour chem lab or something. And I actually forgot my birthday until 1 p.m. and I was waiting to go inside the chem lab. And I was like, oh my God, it's my birthday. And then my partner was like, you're nuts. Like, I can't believe you forgot until now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so this is the same thing like you're more likely to forget that your own birthday exists that you have a birthday <laughs> that you were born that you exist on this planet me i just forget the specific day because mm. mine is july 8th so it's 7 slash 8 and to this day i'm always like is it august 7th or, <laughs> or is it july 8th <laughs> because the confusing thing about the way we write our dates is sometimes we put the month first yeah. and then the day and then sometimes it's yeah. flipped and so uh, yeah yeah i don't have that problem because mine is 10 10 so it's pretty nice oh, oh that's nice <laughs> yeah. yeah now i feel really bad for not remembering <laughs> <laughs> you're 10 out of 10 i should remember that <laughs> question 14 who is more likely to have a midlife crisis hmm this is hard three two one lisa both i i mean i like really also kind don't of know yeah. yeah so i just said both <laughs> I feel like if I were to have a midlife crisis, it would be more like, <laughs> I don't think it would be buying a Lamborghini type of crisis. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I don't think. No, it, it would be that. like more varied than yours. It would, it, instead of being like, oh, should I do this science or that science? It'd be like, should I do this science or like underwater diving? Like, it's like really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, what is midlife anymore? And also, I'd say also like, like 40. Well, it might change during our lifespans as well. So it's kind I of. I mean, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it'll continue to increase, but, you know, I like to be pleasantly surprised, so I say 40. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, like, every year at, that I get after 80, I'm just like, this is a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> this enough. is like a, a cherry on top. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
All right. Question number 15. Who is most likely to fall asleep on the bus and pass their station? Three, two, one, Bo. Rita. I see. Um, what do you say, me? Okay, so I have actually different... So if you just say who is more likely to fall asleep on the bus, uh-huh. absolutely you, because I have insomnia. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot fall asleep anywhere, even in my own bed. Mm. Actually, I was... Funny story. I was recently doing some sleep consultation, yeah. and the woman was asking me a series of questions that I think were intended to evaluate, like, narcolepsy. Yeah. So she was asking me, like, okay, I want you to rate on a scale of zero to three, three being most likely, if you would fall asleep in the situation. Yeah. She think, she would say things like after eating a warm meal, right. after getting up out of bed, yeah. falling asleep... Like, driving in a car and every time i was like zero, zero, zero. <laughs> i on the other hand have actually once fallen asleep standing up and leaning against a wall oh my god <laughs> i mean it wasn't a long sleep but it yeah. did happen <laughs> that's that's crazy um yeah. yeah so i think you're more likely to fall asleep but i think i'm actually more likely to miss my stop because i'm quite bad mm. with like public transport and stuff yeah i've fallen asleep a bunch of times on public transport but somehow i always wake up before my station i don't know yeah. why but it just happens yeah but yeah. my grandma does this thing where if if we tell her, oh, you need to get up at 6 a.m. tomorrow, yeah. somehow her body can wake itself up. She doesn't use an alarm. Yeah, I think if you, like, prime your brain enough for it, you can That's do crazy. it. That's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Question number 16. Who is more likely to call a guest the wrong name? Three, two, one, both? Both. Yeah. I think I'm more likely to call the guest the wrong name when I'm talking to you, but I think you might be more likely if there's a guest present. <laughs> I mean, fair. I will also say that past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. And right. cough, cough, who is the one who accidentally called their supervisor of their new job the wrong name? <laughs> <laughs> but I think all the times that I've done that, there's been like good reasons or it's been like a close name not that that's justifying it but i think it's been a pretty close name yeah everyone knows matthew is like two standard deviations from david (laughs) there was literally the first three letters of the name i thought his name was was in the city he's living in and was part of the his last name so i think it makes sense okay all right question 17 who is most likely to forget where they parked their car this seems like a series of themed questions (laughs) (laughs) three two one bows i think the parking part like where being parked would be lisa maybe but the fact that it's a car <laughs> i was gonna say like i almost said you just by because i don't i don't drive yeah so i don't have a car so i have like a zero percent probability um but if i had a car i would have like a 60 percent probability. <laughs> yeah fair enough although i can't say i'm great about that either yeah, so. that's hard. yeah. question number 18 who is most likely to get punched in the face i can't believe you approved this question this is definitely a question that i suggested by the way it, yeah. it's definitely not frida's um okay i don't know <laughs> let me think three two one both Lisa? i'm very unsure about this one too i would be fine with the both as well i you know a funny thing popped through my mind which i was like well maybe it's me because they could swing at Farida and miss because she's too low to the ground. Oh my god, <laughs> rude! <laughs> like their arm is all the way up there, your face oh is all the way god. down there. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. Really on the it's person being bad. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Like, I feel like if I was going to, it would probably be an accident, or it's at <laughs> some kind of personal defense class, or acting duck. lessons that have gone. Hard. What kind? What do you think acting lessons? like maybe they're supposed to pretend to punch you but they just accidentally go for it okay so just like assault you mean well accidentally they didn't mean to yeah. okay tell that to the court <laughs> yeah but sir he was also punching <laughs> um i had an english teacher in high school who used to work as a bouncer and he's this like really massive guy um and if anyone was like really in his face um to get into a bar and stuff he would like give them a little peck on the lips that they would throw and his anything that he did was counted as self-defense wait sorry he would give them a what a peck like a kiss (laughs) yeah because they'd be like up in his face anyway (laughs) what I was like, how did your wife feel about this? <laughs> like, <Wait>. um... <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I can't, sorry, we can't go into as much detail as I want to go into on this on air. Um, next. Question 19, who is most likely to get struck by lightning? Three, two, one, bows. 
You go first. Okay, so I think this is similar to the question we had in our half birthday extravaganza where we talked about who was more likely to win the lottery, where it's like <laughs> these things are just kind of chance and there's not really I that mean, like, much you can do to change your chances except for the part where like if you want to have a chance at winning the lottery you do have to buy a ticket whereas right. like if you want to have a chance of getting struck by lightning all you, you have need to, to do just is survive yeah. or sorry you just have to be alive yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah like the funny thing here is that statistically it should be around the same except for i guess it would change depending of who which person does more outdoor activities especially I guess in, so yeah like woody areas maybe um which i would say you except for even with that i still feel like it would be <laughs> Like, I don't know why. I just feel like against all odds. Yeah. Oh God, I'm gonna get struck tomorrow, aren't I? I can just feel it. <laughs> struck more, not even once, <laughs> just more. <laughs> Question number twenty: Who is more likely to eat a snail? <laughs> Three, two, one. Farida. Farida. Yeah. Um. Oh, think so? I think so. <laughs> okay. This logic. I don't know if that makes sense, but I do live amongst the French. <laughs> and yeah, I, I know. know. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Well, let's go. go. <laughs> Can you say that like in a more English way? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I was gonna say like you live, lead a more more Frenchy lifestyle. <laughs> also, you're pretty open to trying new foods. I mean, yeah. like, I'm not. I wouldn't be opposed to trying to trying it. But yeah, also. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't tried it already. This is just a side tangent, but I've been reading about how like insects are actually supposed to be the food of the future and how they're just so much more have more nutritional value and are more oh, environmentally God. friendly. Yeah. And I so know. now I'm trying to switch <laughs> to having mm-hmm. um cricket powder as protein powder. <laughs> but Rita. I just can't get myself to do it Rita. yet. But I'm like working on it mentally. So Rita, oh my god. <laughs> Well, she's crossed over. This is the line, and she's crossed it. She was like, "Okay, I think I'm gonna be vegetarian." And she's like, "Okay, I think I'm gonna be vegan." And I was like, "All right, all right, that's good." And now she's like, "Crickets," and I'm like, "Nope." Yeah, but the thing nope. is, like, I'm at least going for the powder, and I want it to be as disassociated from the yeah, insect itself yeah, as possible. No. But there's also a product that's just like the crickets, I but know. like roasted yeah. or something. And I'm like, "Who is eating yeah. these?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the culture too. Like, I know in yeah. some places in China, not like in big cities or anything but certain like in in certain areas like yeah so it turns out it's just north america and europe that's the problem everywhere else (laughs) actually eats as usual (laughs) yeah (laughs) it is north america and europe that is the problem who would have who would have (laughs) thought question 21 who would be the first to go to space Three, two, two. one, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> like, Lisa <laughs> is definitely way more the space nerd. Um, oh, yeah. But I think this also kind of relates to our question of who's more likely to be rich. <laughs> no, like, listen, listen, listen. I will I will do poetry, like, every day. Like, I'll, I'll do readings in the park. I'll collect pennies on the sidewalk until I can afford that. Like, to go to space, yeah. 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 It, I, I feel like it would be something that I would do when I was, like, 60 you know yeah when i've had like a, this. Yeah, you've lived a good yeah. long life <laughs> like like a decent amount but it's like i don't yeah. want to go when i'm 80 because i'm gonna have a heart attack on the rocket or something <laughs> um so yeah like 60 65 i feel like mm. it's like a good time <laughs> this travel will be a little bit more <laughs> solidified by then yeah hopefully also i, I remember reading this this post uh, which is ridiculous about a space hotel and i, I think i, I we, we were talking about this oh, yeah. saying, if i went to space i would not sleep okay yeah. I would, like, are you serious you're gonna pay to go to space literally once in a lifetime experience and you're gonna sleep are you ca- i can't even sleep on earth like no. <laughs> there's no way i'm sleeping in a space hotel yeah I'm doing somersaults all night <laughs> yeah i've been seeing a lot of jeff bezos and space memes oh i even God. sent one to my mom and she thought it was funny <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah could he have picked a worse time i mean during the <laughs> pandemic like you could have picked like just any other year well i'm sure they were planning this ahead <laughs> but yeah yes yes question number 22 who is more likely to think vr is real life Ooh. <laughs> Three, two, one, Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, to be fair, though, I feel like I have very little that would transfer to this question or, like, would be useful to induce the answer to this question. What do you mean? Like, you've never played VR? I have, but not good VR. Uh And I I just feel like there's very little else that would kind of be a similar experience oh yeah no like so i mean like i it's not like i play vr a lot yeah. like i've only played it twice uh, using yeah. a friend's headset but coupled with my um insomnia and sometimes having very bad sleep oh, and coupled true. with the fact that i often like sometimes have those 
crazy inception like lucid yeah. dreams where I, I keep waking up and never actually wake up inside that's the very dream. True. Yeah. Um so yeah, I literally yeah, had a dream fair. like that last night where yeah, yeah, I thought I was thought I was awake but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay question 23 who is more likely to be pickpocketed three two one lisa, lisa? <laughs> i think i'm actually very proud that i have yet to get pickpocketed while traveling because oh, yeah. i'm always super hyper aware <laughs> that, of my... i mean i want to say i've also never i've also never gotten pickpocketed while traveling yeah but i think like it really I, I really like keep everything in eyes yeah like, i'm yeah, constantly thinking about it yeah that's fair um <laughs> yeah I think I told you I'm renting a wheelchair for like about a total of a month yeah because I'm, I'm doing some kind of like travel-y things in the summer mm -hmm. um and like one of the things that I have my backpack but kind of the only way to fit it on the wheelchair is to kind of just hang it from the back yeah. of the wheelchair oh, which man. because there's no one pushing me it's it's, right. it's like a electric sick, powered yeah. it's I feel like it's such a pickpocket risk because <laughs> yeah. I would not there's no way I would even feel it yeah um so yeah um, i've also heard like all those signs that kind of say like beware of pickpocketers actually makes things easier for pickpocketers because everyone what? then reaches into their pocket or like taps the pocket that has the important stuff oh so they God. know like which pockets are trying to get okay so if you're saying if i want to be a pickpocket i just have to hang out under one of those <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah <laughs> Is this like the time where we talked about our home security systems and like now I'm going to tell you which pocket I keep my wallet in? <laughs> <laughs> it's the center pocket. Uh -huh, what? Yeah. Question mark? Don't think about it. <laughs> question number 24, the final question. Who is more likely to reject the other person's suggested question for this game that we're playing? Three, two, one. Farida. <laughs> yeah, I think the process of making the questions for this game was Lisa suggesting questions and me being like yes or no. It literally was, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you came up with a few of them. Yeah, I did. But yeah. Yeah, most of them. So towards the beginning, I was trying to think of inspiration for these questions. So this was before we were going online and pulling from online lists. And I was just looking around me for inspiration. Yeah. I was like, oh, we should say who is more likely to be a pine tree, which I, I don't know. So just stuff like that. So I mean, I don't even blame you for rejecting most of them. It's probably what you do. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is I can never predict though which ones you're going to accept and which ones you're going to reject. Which is weird because I feel like on the flip side I, I can predict but that's I interesting. Can, I can never tell. Mm. All right, that was it for How Well Do You Know Your Co-Host, the second and final edition. Thanks for uh, making it all the way to the end. Also, if you enjoyed this game and you enjoy our silliness in general, we have released a blooper reel um, for the last several months of this podcast. You can check that out on our Facebook page. We will also link it in the show notes of this episode. This has been the final episode of So You Got a Life Side Degree. We want to give one last special, special thanks to our crew of lovely, adorable patrons, including our Little Leaf patrons, Naeem, Daniil, Shafiq, and Shamima, and our fantastic foliage patron, Stephanie. The music you're hearing is Noah Gretz from audiohub.com, and boy, we don't have any. Thank you for supporting and listening to our podcast. We hope you have a wonderful, score-filled rest of your summer. 